Welcome back to the show today. Today we're talking about the Defensive Player of the Year Award. I want to know how the voters decide who should get it. And is there really any objective criteria? I think the MVP candidates are a little more obvious. You can look at the team's overall wins. You can look at the player's stats and advanced metrics. Honestly, with the tracking data we have now, voters can sensibly vote for the MVP without watching a single basketball game. But the Defensive Player of the Year Award is different. NBA voters don't really factor in counting stats all that much. Those being steals, blocks, and defensive rebounds. It is way more based on the eye test. For instance, a player may lead the league in blocks. He might not even make a second team all defense that year. Such has been the case with Miles Turner, who's led the league in blocks for two seasons. He's never received any defensive accolades. Same with Hassan Whiteside. He's led the league in blocks twice, and he's led the league in rebounds once, and he's only been a second team all defense. What gives? These guys are great defenders, but they're not getting any respect. All these league leading seasons for Hassan and Miles Turner, their team's defensive ratings weren't that great. Well, what is defensive rating? Defensive rating is how many points the other team would score in 100 possessions. So the lower the defensive rating, the better. Basically, it's a way to calculate how many points your team gives up during a game. And this is a very important stat when it comes to figuring out who the DPOY is going to be. It's half a reflection on your own ability as a defender, but the other half is your team's defense. Because a large part of defense is communication and the organization amongst your team. Jared Dudley wasn't the greatest athlete, but he was a great defense because he was smart. He knew exactly where he was supposed to be at all times. He knew where the offense was and he knew where his teammates were. He was also great at knowing the details of what makes good on ball defense. He knew instinctively what position to put his opponent in for a bad shot or a terrible pass. I found these cool videos where Jared Dudley is teaching kids how to play defense. And the videos are really good. He's kind of going through the different things you wouldn't really think about when you're playing defense on somebody. Most of the videos are about putting yourself in a better position for a block or a rebound. These are the things we are way more aware of now that get you a lot more respect than they used to. I think of a player like Derek White, who has decent steals and blocks this year, but his defensive presence is really felt when he's on the court. He works hard and he works smart. He knows where to be. One thing I notice about White is he knows when to kind of let up on his man. Sometimes you think he's being lazy by letting a guy get past him, but he's really pushing a guy into a congested space or another defender. Or even right here, he lets Dinwiddie get past him and he knows he's going to drive the lane for a dunk. It's smart because he's baiting Dinwiddie and for going for a poster and he knows he's going to do it so he can block it. Derek White does this a lot. Sometimes he'll just let a guy blow past him so he can block him. This is where working smarter, not harder comes in. If you figure, I'll just let this guy go past me and naturally he's going to go for a layup. So all you have to do is get in a position where the guy can't see you and you block his shot when he goes up. Pretty smart. But defense like this is not going to win a DPOY trophy. Let's analyze a player who has won a DPOY trophy. Draymond Green, who you may have referred to as the floor general. What that means is he bosses his teammates around. He yells at Jonathan Kaminga to go guard the best player on the other team. I'm kidding. Draymond is able to see the court really well and predict what the offense's next move is. So while he's obviously directing traffic and telling which players to pick up and which players to slack off of, most of his leadership comes from what he can teach his teammates. Giving them better instincts or telling them what the next chess move would be. So while Draymond doesn't lead the league in blocks every year, he led the league in steals though once. When you watch a Golden State Warriors game, it's not hard to see why Draymond is the most impactful defender on the court. It's because he's paying attention. Just like any activity, there are different levels of focus you can have. Most possessions in the NBA come down to does a player make or miss a shot? That's how the majority of plays end in the NBA. Even with an elite defense, the play usually doesn't end with a block or a steal. So from the outsider looking in, every play kind of looks the same. But the best defense in the league make each possession harder for the offense. They'll probably make a shot a little more difficult to get off. Every pass is going to be a little harder, and every drive through the lane is going to require a little more physical energy. So after 90 to 100 possessions, this good defense is going to be reflected on the scoreboard, even if you may not have even noticed it out on the court. I know I've talked about this before, but to prove my point that DPOY is a little bit of a sham, two defensive players of the year have been second team all defense the year they won. This was Tyson Chandler in 2012 and Marcus Gasol in 2013, meaning that there was a enough of a discrepancy between who was the best defender in the league that most voters believe they weren't even one of the five best defenders in the league. LeBron noticed this too. 2012-2013, I had a chance to be Defensive Player of the Year and also MVP in the same season. And that year, Mark Gasol was rewarded Defensive Player of the Year. But he made second team all defense. He thought he should have won instead. I think Defensive Player of the Year also has a lot to do with narrative, too. And a large part of narrative is your team's success, and tertiarily what your role in that success is. One player who is no stranger to the DPOY award is Rudy Gobert. He's won the award three times, he might win it a fourth. But even after he won his third trophy, he received a lot of scrutiny and was called a fraud. In 2021, in a series against the Clippers, the Clippers went small ball, they didn't use anyone in the post. All five Clippers played on the perimeter and put up tons of threes. Rudy Gobert is not a good perimeter defender. He's a rim protector, that's what 
he excels at. So in that playoff series, he was constantly slacking off the shooters. And the Clippers were drilling everything. This caused a lot of people to say he shouldn't have won the DPOY award that year. Because he was kind of useless on the perimeter. But this is kind of a foolish statement. Every NBA player can't be good at everything. Rudy is an incredible shot blocker and a great pick and roll defender. The Jazz didn't have a great defense and that's why Rudy was forced out of his comfort zone. This is sort of what I'm talking about. Defensive player of the year has a lot to do with how we tell the story. It's almost like different lawyers pleading their case to a judge. Because there's so many games and ways to interpret good defense that to form your own opinion would kind of just take too much time. That isn't to say it's not an important award. I think it really adds something to your resume if you are a great NBA player. The award tends to go to defensive specialists like Dikembe Mutombo, Dwight Howard, Ben Wallace. But there are all-time NBA greats who have won the award. A lot of them you might have forgotten just because they have so many other accolades. Michael Jordan has been DPOY, David Robinson's been DPOY, Hakeem's won it twice, and Giannis has won it. I think the reason LeBron was so upset he didn't win it in 2013 is because he wanted to be a part of this club. Mark has my Defensive Player of the Year trophy at his house, but... <laughs> Yo, but, I, but, 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 but that's no hero there. Know. Players like this only have a short window to win the DPOY trophy. Kobe, LeBron, Chris Paul, they were all in contention to win it when they were younger, but as they got older, they kind of lost the ability to play on both sides of the floor that well. Because while they hadn't hit their peak yet, they'd hit their physical peak. They just aren't guarding the other team's best player anymore. The offense is a little bit too dependent on them, and their knees are just a little too beat. Joel and Giannis didn't even make an all-defensive team last year. Alright, this video is kind of over, but I want to acknowledge the fact that Hakeem Olajuwon won the Defensive Player of the Year award, the NBA MVP, and the Finals MVP in 1994. He won all the awards in one year. No player's ever done that. Good for Hakeem. Alright, I know there's plenty of meat still left on the bone for that, so let me know what I missed. I always reply. Like the video if you liked the video. If you didn't really like it and you thought it was uh, not very good, dislike the video, express yourself. I appreciate the feedback. Watch basketball. Talk about it with a friend. Be good to your mom. Maybe, maybe a corn dog.